it's Spence, the evil genius. Fun to the board, Tori, with your lab secrets tip of the day. Well, we've had a request from a very loyal customer of ours who wants to build a file sharing site where the members can come along and share some very unique files that have to do uh, with mobile devices and some other things. Now, basically the file types are going to be electronic and format. So there might be some image files, there might be some sound files, there might be some applications, etc. The way that we're going to set it up for her is to utilize two of the key features that are available inside the Lab Secret Solution. And I'm going to show you how that works here. Number one, we're using the outstanding plugin called Gravity Forms that allows you to build a members accessible uploading form that they can use for uploading both the content of a post as well as the attached files. This means that what they can do is pretty much get on the front side of your site and create most of the stuff that you're going to need in order to include it in a custom post type on your site. And what's nice too is because you can provide them with the categories already available, they just need to select whichever category they think it fits best into. In the end, you'll be able to edit it and go ahead and post it so that everyone can share it. All right, let me start with showing you how this works and then we'll work our way backwards. Now, here I've got a blog post. Remember what I indicated was that we're going to be able to utilize the categories. So in this case, the customer has a long list of categories that represent all different types of files. So in this case, for example, this is going to be, let's just say, uh, an anniversary image. It could be an anniversary ringtone or any other kind of file you want. But in this case, that means that when I click on this category tag or search for it, I can go ahead and find anything on the site that will match with that tag. Most importantly, the post itself is just like any other blog post, so that when it's being read, it can be looked at in excerpt format, or when you click on the title, it goes to the long format. That means that you can have a little bit of a teaser uh, that allows people to read quickly through a lot of things, but yet you click on it and come to the long form version. Now what we've done here is we've actually included the download link as an automatically generated button in the long form version. So again, I'll go backwards. When you're doing the excerpt, even though it's pretty much the same content, there's no button. There's just the continue reading. And then you have to go to the full page to see the details. Okay, once here, now the download link is available again to anybody who is allowed to see this page. When I click on it, there's the file. It's just a logo file in this case, but it could be any other type of file. All right, let me show you how I did it. And oh, one more thing I want to tell you, you can also use the tags. So besides having the main category, I can also put in descriptive tags that say, ah, this is a file for iPod and Xbox, etc. And of course, we got the other features like being able to bookmark it. All right, let me show you the upside or the front side where people will upload the files and information. If I go over here to a page that I've created, I'll call this the file upload page. Basically, this is just a regular page on the uh, Lab Secret Solutions site. A person who is a member can come along and say, I want to post a new title. So in this case, I could say, hello, this is an awesome file. I could put in some details, for example, blah, blah, blah. And I could say an excerpt, which is shorter, so it's just blah. And then the tags, let's just say I could put in ones or we can have a drop down list here. I'm going to say uh, PS3 and I'm going to say iPad. Now here's the part that's cool. The post categories I did make into a drop down list. Let me scroll up a little. So I could choose from any of these categories. Maybe this is going to go on. It doesn't make sense, of course, but it's a get well category. Here I can upload various files from whatever I want to do. So let's just take a file I have, maybe like a trike file on the desktop here. And I go to my desktop and I think I have a file here. And I'm going to upload that. I could do a post image as well. So in the event that I was using the files to upload for maybe, um, let's say, a music file or something that wasn't visual, I could have an additional field here for a post image, which means that that would be something somebody could uh, use to show artwork on the box or to show a screenshot, or we could even use it for videos. Click on submit. And now what happens is it gets submitted from the public side of things over to the admin side of things where I or the other people I've authorized to run my site can go ahead and exercise editorial control over. So I get a little warning that says, thank you for contacting us. We can change that message, of course. Uh, to something more like thanks for submitting. Now I'm going to go back over to the admin side of things. And here you can see what the blog posts look like. Now what I've done is effectively set it up so I'm using the regular posts editor. 
And um, this is a blog post that was already submitted. The one that we're using as the example. And you'll notice that there's really not much to it. The same data fields that were submitted before are in the blog post itself. We've also got the file attachment here. Uh, maybe this will be more clear. Let's go to the one and see what was just submitted. So in order to do that, let's go over and click on posts. And when I do, you'll see that it lists two posts here. One is the sample one that I did before. And here, I'm sorry, here's the one that I did before. And here's the one that was just submitted. So let's look at the one that was just submitted. And you can see the same information where I've got basically what was just submitted by the member. This is the blah, blah, blah. I've got the file that was uploaded. I've got, if I open this excerpt up, you'll see I've got the short version, the blah, and then all the rest of the post options. So if I want to approve this, I can just go ahead and click on publish. If I'm not ready to approve it, I can go ahead and edit it. This has been edited just like any other blog to make sure it's spellings, right? The formatting's right. Everything looks beautiful. I can make sure the categories are correct and that there's any tags added. And once I'm satisfied, then as the editorial uh, person in charge, I click publish. And that's basically all that there is to it. Now I have a second user submitted file upload with details that I can go visit. If I go over here and open this in a new tab, just like before, We've got this really beautiful situation where, yeah, it's a blog post, blah, blah, blah. This has been edited and the download link. I click on it and there's the trike file. So that's how the actual formatting and the processing works. Let me show you the mechanics behind it. One of the things that we did is we created a custom form using Gravity Forms that is allowing people to go ahead and upload from this file upload page. So if I refresh this page, you can see here at the bottom, I can edit this form. So let's look to see what the form looks like. And here you'll see that I've got a form editor, real simple to work with. And basically I just have a descriptive title. I've got the ability for a person to add a post title, the body, the excerpt, the tags, all those things that go in the blog post editor. Here's the category. Now this is really cool because by default, Gravity Forms allows you to have access to your existing database of categories. So when I want to set up the categories, I can go ahead and have it where I can either select specifically from my own categories, or I could just say like I did, all categories, in which case a drop down will show up. Really cool because you don't have to worry about retyping all the categories that you already have in your blog uh, category settings. Here's the file to upload. And again, I set this up so that somebody can upload a variety of file types. There's a, a file extension limiter here where you can set up so that somebody doesn't upload an exe file or any other dangerous file like a php file that they could execute on your site uh, but at the same time you can also put in things that you want them to be able to upload pdf a png an mov etc okay now the way that we set this up uh, in general on the form is just drag and drop because basically uh, the fields that you need to sort of uh, select from if you will are available here on the right hand side and in this case, we selected from the posts fields. We went ahead and clicked on title and body, excerpt tag, category, image, and custom field. And the custom field was what I just showed you where we set it up to be the upload file. Okay, now that you're done with that, you go ahead and click on save. And we can move on to show you how exactly that fits together with the rest of the project. So let's go back over here on the back end of the site. We have one last thing to show you, and that is that there is a actual administrative paddle for Gravity Forms. And that's over here. It's called Forms. When we open it up, we can see that we can edit the forms we've created. We can make a new one from scratch. But the one I want to show you is the entries, because this also provides a way for you to administer all the entries on a top level basis, not just through the post editor. And you can see here that we can select which form. In this case, we only have one. It's the file upload form. And we can see all of the things that have been submitted. Now, if I wanted to do so, I could just go ahead and view this. And when I do, it'll allow me to go ahead back to the post and see the details uh, in a different way. This is a more accessible way if you have literally hundreds and hundreds of posts because you can take some notes. You can uh, go ahead and see the empty fields as well. And most importantly, there's also some links over here that allow you to see who uploaded it. You can edit it directly and you can even change or go to the embedded URL. When you're all done, you can click on edit entry to save anything you've changed. And that's the simple way to manage it from the top level down. The way that all of this works 
is easy for you to implement. First of all, if you're on the Lab Secret Solution, we've included the necessary function inside of your core theme. But for those of you who are a little bit more hardcore programming and want to take a little chance here, I'm going to show you exactly the little snippet you want to include. So we go over here, and this is inside of our lab theme, and we went into the template called the single post template. This is the one that's used whenever a blog post is viewed in the detailed mode. And all the snippet involves is what you see right here. Basically, we created a little bit of code that takes the content of that custom field from the blog post editor, and it goes ahead and adds it in so that it displays in a proper format with a link and everything else. Um, I'm going to post this along with this tutorial so anybody who's interested can utilize it. And if you have any questions, you can reach us, of course, at labsecrets.com. But for now, that's the way to handle a custom field upload page and posting mechanism for your site on the Lab Secret Solution. This is Spence, the evil genius from Witch of the Boratory.